Hi, this is Ron from pocculture.com. Rosalie, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Very excited to chat with you. Um, what I love about the timing of our conversation is a lot of times it's before the release of the film and it's all prospective, but here we are the Monday after um, premiere weekend. How are you feeling with it finally out there um, for everyone to see? It feels weird because I have been doing all this press stuff and premiere stuff. And so it already felt like it was released, but now that it actually is released, um, I'm just excited for all the responses. Yeah, and I, as far as on my end, I think the response has been overwhelmingly positive. I hope that's been your experience as well. Did you do anything special to celebrate this weekend? No. <laughs> We, we haven't even we haven't even celebrated for me booking the role in the first place because of COVID. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Obviously, that's put a wrench in so many plans over the years. Um, you know, it's interesting because I saw one of your Instagram posts and you talked about how you watched the film, obviously numerous times, but it took like the fourth time for you to really appreciate your own performance. Um, how was that experience of watching it and being a little bit hard on yourself? And what was it that finally led you to really embrace what a great job you did? And you did a great job. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I, ever since I started, I would ever start, ever since I started recording for Pixar and I would go home and maybe record an audition and I would listen to my voice. I'd be like, why do they want my voice? I always thought my voice was super irritating. So <laughs> I really filled my head with a lot of doubts and I'm just, I'm very critical of myself, especially in acting, because this, there's no right or wrong in acting. And when I first watched the movie, I thought the movie was great, but then like, I just couldn't stand my voice. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound right. I don't think I did a good job. Oh, I could have done better with that. And then, but then at the, <laughs> took the, the fourth time watching the movie, I, I just really listened to what I said and did and just hearing the reactions of other people laughing at a joke I said, or, or, um, or be becoming emotional and May does as well. So I'm just, yeah, it, it was, it's been a journey, but I think I've gotten there. <laughs> And I'm glad to hear that. It's almost like the theme of the movie itself, right? It's almost like that was your red panda and it's learning to really embrace and, and love that part of it. And I think you really did a great job. Um, how have your parents been um, responding? Parents and other family members, how have they responded to you over the weekend and recently in general? Oh, uh, my family recently, my, well, my cousins and my uncles and aunts, they all re watched it this weekend. And I mean, they're very supportive of me. And they said, wow, you did such a good job. And hearing that, hearing that from them really means the world to me. Yeah, I, I love that kind of support. Can we just actually go back to when you first started working on this project? I've heard you talk about how it's basically taken from ages 12 to 16 of your life, which is just an incredible time of your own maturity and development. Um, you know, how did you first start working on it? And what was it like working on it for such a huge portion of your life so far? Okay, so I started when I was 12. And that was, I originally when I auditioned it and booked it, it was for a scratch recording. So that means it's pre production. So they were still figuring out the plot, the characters, the design, and they just needed a voice to animate off of. And there was there was still a chance at that point that the movie wouldn't even be made. So for, I did scratch for around two years and after two years, they, they told me that I officially booked it, which obviously happiest moment of my life. And because, well, during the scratch recordings, as they were like, oh, well, it's been greenlit. They're going to make the movie. And we're like super happy. But at that point, I still hadn't officially booked it. So I was kind of like, oh, are they still going to keep me or whatnot? But then eventually, as you know, they booked me officially and here we are. And how did that feel when you finally, again, just toiling away, hoping that A, it would get made, that you would land the role? How did it feel to finally get that confirmation? Yes, it's being made. And yes, you are the star. Um, when I, just the fact that I was at Pixar, because because during the scratch recording, I was just kind of living in fear that I wasn't going to book this because I really, really, with all my heart, wanted this role. But then... At the off chance that I didn't book it, I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm just going to savor these moments because the fact that I'm working 
at Pixar is such a huge deal and it's a huge honor already. And so I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna do it as though I'm not gonna book it and that this is it. But then, so then when I, when they found that, when I found out that I booked it, I was kind of frozen in shock. <laughs> it was the moment I wasn't expecting because I told myself not to anticipate for it. And I'm just very grateful for them. I love that. It's certainly something you'll never forget for the rest of your life. I know you're, you live in the Bay Area and I used to live there for a few years and it's such a great hub of Asian American culture um, and community. And how does it feel to be in a film that's so important for Asian representation? You know, Pixar's first mm -hmm. ever um, Asian female protagonist. How have you experienced that um, representation moment? I think just reading kind of YouTube comments, a lot of people are saying, this was oddly similar to my life and how much they related to it. Because I've seen people say, oh, the, it's so cartoonish, the mom is so cartoonishly overbearing. But then people are in the comments like, no, my mom is exactly like that. In fact, I think they underdid it a little bit. <laughs> and just hearing that people are going through similar experiences, because I went through a similar experience to May, but I thought that that was weird and only as only to my household. But to find out that a lot of people can relate to it is just really touching. Yeah, I, I loved Domi, Director Domi, she's story about how her own mom hid behind a tree for her, for her school and, and how relatable that is. Let's talk about being relatable because I think it's definitely a story that's not just relatable for Asian audiences, but really yeah. it, it is a universal story. Um, what do you feel is really kind of the universal theme that everyone can connect to for Turning Red? Embracing change because in the movie, she she's going through she's going through these awkward changes as a tween, and it's something that everyone goes through. And for some reason, it's treated as such a taboo subtopic. I mean, this is the first this is kind of the first anim Pixar film to really explore that because I think Pixar does a great job at exploring different things like emotions, the meaning of life, and I think it was only only right that they experience they tell the story of puberty in a fun, funny way. And I hope that people can watch this movie and think, yeah, everyone's going through change. Everyone is going, everyone is, it's so awkward, it's cringy, but at the end of the day, everyone goes through it. So it's okay. 100%, we all have to embrace the cringe. <laughs> you, um, I saw this really great Lunar New Year Disney video with you and your mom even made an appearance. And I, I'm just curious, as you go through this period of your life and you, you know, tell this story, what, ha how has your relationship with your mom been informed by your experience here and, and, you know, as it progresses and you grow up? You know, my mom is very similar to me. It was like, the, as you mentioned, the Disney video, when I found out my mom was going to be in it, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and she was literally acting like me during <laughs> the, the pictures and the video because she'd be like, oh, do this. And I'm like, mom, just wait. And she's like, no, do this. I'm like, come on. And I'm like, mom, I think I know what I'm doing. And um. As my mom and I relationship has changed, I'm not exactly sure. We kind of looked at each other after the movie, like, oh, this is oddly similar. But I would say it's overall the same. I mean, she's she's already pretty relaxed compared to other mothers, so I'm grateful for that. But she still does have her Ming moments. And I think you'll probably experience her Ming moments the rest of your life, no matter how old you are. Uh, well, Rosalie, I really think you did an incredible job. I love the film and congratulations. I look forward to seeing more from you. Thank you so much. Take care.